This is Security Post Korea, easily one of the most fun and well set up locations for PvP combat in Star Citizen, just got a major overhaul in patch 318, and I'm here to tell you everything about it. If you haven't heard about or have yet to visit Security Post Korea, it is a station located in orbit around the moon Selen, which is a moon of Crusader. It has been through a lot over the years, so let's first talk about what has changed about the location in 318. Since the station's inception, it has been a derelict. In Laura, there was an accident that rendered the station inoperable, and it served as a location for people to clear their crime stat. Since the underground bunkers came in with criminal databases as well, they were way more defensible since they only have one entrance. Most people chose to clear at those and avoid the security post. This is now the only location in Stanton to clear your crime stat again, a much needed bottleneck of PvP content. Now the approach is the same. If you're welcomed at the station, feel free to land on the pads. If not, parking under the largest two pads is the only safe place from the turrets. Be advised, the pads are now patrolled by armed guards as well. In 318, the station is back up and running, and it also has a fancy new paint job, both inside and out. And the layout has changed quite a bit as well. There is a lot more cover on the ground level, and in the main room, there is a new panel opposite of the old hacking terminal. The area that used to be a quite empty room has now been replaced by an evidence room as well. Maybe that panel has something to do with getting in there. On the second level, mostly everything is the same, except the old office has been replaced with a vent you can crouch through to get on top of the evidence room. But don't make the same mistake I did, thinking this was a sneaky spot. If you look up, the third floor has a direct line of sight on you. In the new SPK, there are nearly no places to hide. The third level remains almost unchanged, so this is a good time to mention that the location has significantly less weapon loot boxes than before, and I have yet to find a high-end weapon there like a railgun. Now that we've talked about the location, let's talk about the gameplay additions here. We've already mentioned the hacking change, but there are some law changes as well. You can now pay off any lower level crimes at terminals located at most landing zones, but if you happen to kill a guard, you have to come here to clear it. And remember, the station is now operational unless you have permission, more on that later in the video, you will always be trespassing here. But don't fear too much, the speed at which the crimes are hacked away is significantly faster in 318 than in previous patches. And this goes for the initial hack with the crypto key, but it also is hacking the actual crimes down when you choose the different reasonings behind why it's being dismissed. As you can see, it is going much faster than before, even for the highest level crimes. There is more to do here now than just hack away your crime stat though. If you kill enough guards at the location, a boss guard will spawn with Crusader security themed Morozov armor, and he can take quite a few shots before going down. So make sure you have a full mag no matter what gun you use. A little tip here, make sure you take the Selen comma ray down if you want to avoid getting any crime stats, as this will put a bounty on your head and make you an easier target to take out. As you can see here, I'm not getting any crimes with the array down, but I am with the array up. And after you get the boss down, look in his chest in his inventory and there'll be a data pad. On that pad should be a number. Plug that into the new terminal we spoke about earlier in the main room. And not only will that unlock the evidence room, but it will release a number of evidence boxes anywhere between 15 and 22 in my experience. Every so often, a number of different items will come up this elevator. Some are worth a lot and some are worth very little. Items that have no to low value are a basketball, the black boxes, assorted illegal commodities, and the blue evidence box. Items of high value are the cardboard fragile boxes and the Pico. Let's talk about the Pico first. It is the rarest item that can spawn in the evidence locker. It's a Pico doll that has an inventory and the items that come inside are well, not exactly legal. The bags inside aren't very valuable, but I imagine people would wanna buy this Pico off you for a good price since it's unique. 
basically other Picos that you buy at the shops, they don't have the inventory ability and it's kind of cool. Believe it or not, the real money is made here with these cardboard boxes. They're worth about 27,000 each and at least a few pop up in each run. If you total everything we've done in SPK runs, it's around 200,000 Alpha UEC and you also get all the additional action as well. And let's talk about that potential action. Anytime you are partaking in these types of activities at the post, the entire server gets a mission to retake security post Korea. So you are going to have a number of people showing up to PVP you. And when you win the encounters, it's very satisfying. You will have a hard time knowing what door they went in, how many people are there, unless you're really organized. It's super exciting. When you take the mission yourself, you have full access to the station without being attacked by the guards. It will tell you how many player characters are at the station that don't have the mission. And if they do have the mission, there'll be a little carrot over their head. Uh, and it says how many you need to clear out and sending them to prison will complete one of those tasks. For each player you send to prison, you receive 25,000 credits, which makes this absolutely worth the risk. And as we showed earlier in the mission write-up, if you complete the mission, you get the 10,000 mission reward, plus whatever spoils you may find. And that was our security post Korea guide for Star Citizen 318. As you can see, a lot of changes have come to the location, and it's essentially a miniature jump town. There is an opportunity to make money on either side of the law, and if you want some PvP action that isn't just ships zooming around, this is going to be the place to be. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and maybe even share the video around with others who may need it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one.